Hello world, this is Narvin Reddy from Talisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about async task. Now, uh, as you know, Java, this Android is inspired by Java, right? So everything you do in Android is inspired by Java. So whenever you write Android code, so in that you have to write XML code and Java code, right? So we have to design your page with the help of XML and you write the code or you perform the actions with the help of Java, right? Now what happens when you, when you work with Java, uh, so by default you have one thread. So I hope you know the concept of threads, right? Because to understand what is async task, you should, you should have some knowledge about threads. So when you talk about Java, we by default, we work with a main thread, right? So one thread is running, which is main thread. Now, if you don't know that, that we have a main thread, uh, try out any exceptions. Uh, let's say you are, you are dividing a number by zero. So you will get arithmetic exception. So the statement will be exception in thread main. So by default in Java, in basically in code Java, we have a main thread, right? In the same way, if we talk about Android, we have something called as UI thread. Now what is this UI thread? This is user interface thread. So what it means? So let's say you're using any app. So let's say you're using Amazon app or you're using my app, which is Telisco app on Android. So what happens? So let's say you're going to a code section. So in my app, you can, you can find different features. We have codes, we have videos. So let's say you go to code section where you will get all the codes about uh, code Java. And when you click on a button, let's say you want a code for encapsulation, maybe you require a code for maybe multiple threading. In that scenario, when you when you browse something, when you click on a button or when you when you when you drag, you are working with UI thread. So every actions which are performed is done with the help of UI. So what happens when you when you click on a button? So let's say uh, you're using my app and suddenly you request for a page. So my app is basically a web-based app so everything is saved on the server okay which is OpenShift server for me so website name is telisco.com so we have telisco.com which is deployed on a server and this server runs on OpenShift server from from the that so we have this server here and we have an app right so this is your app here so this is a mobile phone in which you are running an app now let's say you are you, are, you, you open my app and then you are browsing for the code, right? So you are request you have requested for the code and then you are browsing the code here, right? So we have the code for encapsulation. Then we have let's say again multi-threading. Now as soon as you click on a code, let's say you want a code for palindrome. So we have a palindrome code here. Now when you click on the palindrome code, it will show you the new activity, right? The next activity. So again, again, I know. In fact, you know that how to how to start an activity, right? So we have to use intent there. So let's say before calling the next activity, we want data, right? So from where, from where you will get the data because data is not stored inside the mobile phone. It is stored on the server. So your app will request to the server for the code, right? So you have to request for the code here. Now when you request for a code, it will take some time, right? Maybe two or three seconds. Um, it's much, right? Let's say you are using a good internet connection. It will take at least one second to get the response. Now your request goes to the server and then you'll be getting the response. Now by the time your UI thread, so you have this UI thread which is busy with the request, right? So your UI thread is waiting for the response. Till that time, you cannot, you cannot uh, do anything in, in, on your app, right? Because your UI thread, this thread is busy with the request, right? And you will think it's okay, right? For, for one or two seconds, your app will not work. But hold on, we are humans of 21st generation. We are living in 2016 and we don't have patience. You know, you go to Facebook, you go to all, this, all these websites and if, if when you click on a button, if that doesn't work, what we do? We again click it, right? We don't have patience. Now, can you wait for one or two seconds? Of course, the answer is no, right? No one waits for one or two seconds. So what we can do here is, instead of your UI threads sends a request, we have to create one more thread. So what we'll do is, so this UI thread is busy with your app itself. So this, this UI thread is here. It's working with your app. And as soon as you send the request, so for sending the request, we have to use a new thread. Okay, so we can say that this T1. So this T1 is busy with the request. Okay, UI is still there with you. So let's say T1 is sending the request and you're getting the response. By the time you can access your app, so you can scroll up, scroll down because of you have UI thread with you. Okay, so in total we are working with two threads. Now question arises: how to achieve this T1? And to achieve T1, we have to use a concept called as async task. Okay, so what is async? It is, it is 
a synchronous task using which, which you can achieve this uh, multiple threading app, web application, so not web application, but uh, another application. Okay, so that's a sync task for you. But then question, let's say you want to implement this now, how to implement this? So you have to create a class inside your app. So you have basically you have to create an inner class which will provide you a async task feature. So you have to create a class. So let's say I have in my app, I have to create a class. Okay, so let's say I have a, I have a class here. So we have a class, let name, let's, name, let's say that class is A and we have to extend. Okay, so we have to extend that class with the help of async task. Okay, so we have uh, extends async task here. So do we have T here? Yes, we have capital T, right? So that's that's capital T there. So we have async task, right? And then in this class, we have so we have to use four methods. Okay, so whenever you work with async task, we have to we have to use four methods, and we have to use three parameters or three types three types here, which is a generic type. And I hope you know the generic types, right? So again, you, you should know about generics before this. So for this, we have to mention three things here. Okay, three parameters, the first one, second one, third one. So we have to mention the type of those parameters. So the first one will be your params. So the number of parameters you pass, example, the URL and all those stuff. The second one is the progress. Okay, which will update your progress. And the third one, the third one is result. So you have to mention three things. The first one is params, which is parameters. The second one is progress and the third one is result. Okay. So let's say your param type is integer or string. You have to mention string here. If your progress type is integer, you have to mention integer here. And if you have result type as string, so you have to mention string. If it is integer, you have to mention integer there. Now, if you don't want to mention anything here, you can mention void, void and void, which means you are not passing any parameters. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have to create a class which extends async task. But when you will work with async task, it, 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 it will ask you for four methods. The first method is, let me write that method here. So we have, we have to write those methods. So the first method is uh, on pre-execute. So that's the first method, okay. The second method, that's the method. The second method is do in background. Okay, in fact, this is small g. I have this habit of using camel guessing rules. Uh, the third one is, what the third one? It is on progress update. And the fourth one is, it is on post uh, execute. Okay, so we have these four methods. We have the first one as on pre-execute, then we have do in background, we have on progress update and then we have on post execute. So we have these four methods. So what this method will do? So first thing, uh, first we'll talk about the parameters. So whenever you work with doing background, you have to pass this parameters here. So you have this parameters param. So you have to pass this parameters here. So we have to pass params. Okay, so we have to use this, this, uh, this type in doing background. The second one is progress, right? So of course, where you have to mention that we have to mention that here, which is progress okay and the third one is the result and that you have to mention in so that's your result you have to mention that in in on post execute so what will happen now so when you want to achieve this async task so before sending the request you have to achieve some you have to do some extra work right so before executing the async task before sending the request you have to do some prerequisites so that's your pre on pre execute and this method will be done by your UI threads itself. So this UI thread will take care of on to execute. After that, once you send the request, what should happen in the background? So let's say you are using, you, are, you have clicked on a button. So you are still using UI. So what should happen in, uh, on the async thread? So that you have to mention on doing background. So let's say you want to send a request or you want to do anything. Those tasks done, done in the on uh, doing background. Now let's say, you have sent a request and you're trying to download lots of files. So you're downloading, let's say five files and you want to show the show to the user that something is going on. So let's say you're doing for you're sending a request, which, which will take three to four seconds. Now you have to inform your user that it will take some time. How will you inform? So you have to show some progress bar. 
it's happening, it's happening 25%, 50%, 75%, and then 100%, 100% right? How can you inform that 50% is done? So what you can do is you can mention on progress update. So let's say if you're downloading the first file, 25% done. Second file, 50% done. So that's that possible with the help of on progress update. The fourth one is on post execute. So let's say everything is done. You have sent the request. You got the response. Now what? Now you want that result to be processed, right? And that thing you can do in inside on post execute. Sounds simple, right? So we have to use these four methods. How exactly to implement this? That we'll see once we start with the practical implementation. So I had a choice to start with practical itself, but you know, sometimes it'd be a bit difficult to understand when you directly start with the practical. So this is the theory of that, okay? So make sure you understand what are the terminology we have. Uh, the actual work will be done inside on the practical itself, okay? So this is just a theory for that. Got the idea? So we have to use all these things. So once again, we have async task, which is used for multi-threading. So let's say you want to achieve, you want to send a request to a server, we have to use async task. So by default, you have UI thread. We require one more uh, thread here, which is async thread, which will send the request to the server. And from the server, you'll be getting the response, okay? And then you want to, uh, you have to, to achieve that, we have to create a class which extends async task. And you have to provide the generic there. So you have to pass three generics. The first one is the params. The first, second one is the progress. And the third one is result. And in this, you have to use four methods. It's not compulsory to use all the four methods, but it recommends to use those four methods. The first one is on pre executes on pre execute. So if you want to do something with before sending the request, we can use on pre execute. Once you have sent the request, something is going on. What is that something you have to mention that in uh, doing background? Then we have, so let's say you are doing some task. It will take lots of time. So you have to use on, po on progress update. And then we have on post execute for the results. Okay, then question arise. So it is one of the best thing, right? So from today, whenever you want to wait for some time, maybe five to six seconds, we will be using async task, right? Uh, that's not the case. Whenever you have a small duration gap, maybe two to three seconds or maximum five seconds, go for async task. But if it takes a lot of time, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, don't use async task. In that scenario, you can use executors. Again, what is executors? It's a multi-threading multi -threading concepts in Java. So you have to use that when you work for a longer duration. Okay, but for a shorter duration, for sending a request to the server, getting the response, this is one of the best way to do it. Okay, so that's it. Your That's what your async task is. So thanks for watching and do subscribe for further videos.